Jag X is lying to you. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. People are not happy about this. The biggest surprise out of all this to me was that people play RuneScape 3. Hero Pass just released, and it's not what it's supposed to be, and Jagex is misleading you in- So let's look at, uh, by playing RuneScape and completing Hero Pass missions, you'll reward, you'll progress through the track and obtain a variety of rewards. While everyone can obtain rewards, Premier members or Premier Hero Pass holders have access to even more awesome rewards. Um, let me guess, Premier members and Hero Pass Premier members, this is, um, you pay money to be a Premier member? And you pay money to be a Premier Hero Pass holder? Yeah, I can't believe that. Wow, what a surprise. Well, I guess that's something new. How could I have possibly predicted this? Uh, you're currently level seven with zero out of a thousand hero points. Your Yak Track skips have converted to six levels. If unlocked, the progress booster from Fourth and Tree uh, Frontier Yak Track would have awarded 10 levels. You should have spent that money. Let's start by talking about the Hero Pass's oh, wow. length because understanding how long it takes to complete will offer you an educated perspective on everything else wrong with it. Well, Hero why does it take so long to complete? Well, I would like to divert your attention over to the uh, right-hand side of the screen towards the middle. Uh, if you look at the red icon there, not the X, that's what you should be pressing. But in fact, people are going to be pressing the red one below that. Purchase levels. That's right. Hero Pass has 120 levels. 120. 99 of which are one That's right, guys. It's not enough to have 100. 1,000 points each, with the last 21 levels, so levels 100 to 120, requiring 3,000 points okay. each. Okay, so In if there's 3,000 and there's 20 of them, that means it's really 160. Total this means that the Hero Pass has 162,000 points. He did the points, math. Although there is a Discover mission which gives you 1,250 points for pretty much just exploring the interface and completing a single daily, giving you a grand total of 1,250 points. So let's say that in total you need to gain 160,750 Hero Points yeah, sure. to complete this Hero Pass. Got Currently it. you can gain 240 points per hour skilling and 240 points per hour for doing combat as well. If you're killing bosses, you're able to gain an additional point for every 5 marks mm -hmm. of war and as you're able to gain 1,000 marks of war per hour, that would mean you'd be able to gain 200 points more per hour doing some kind of AFK boss, for example AFK Arch Glacier with all mechanic turned on. Sure. This means that bossing, AFK bossing that is, is 440 points per hour at best. You can also do clues where you gain. So if it's 440, this is probably assuming 100% uptime, which is probably not accurate. I would assume probably 10% or so downtime. So you're really probably looking at 400 points per hour. So if you have 160,000 at 400 points per hour, you're looking at, let's see, uh, 400, so that'd be 4,000, is it 160,000? Sorry, like I, I was, I, 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 yeah, the 400, right? It's the 400 number. But like, I was thinking to myself, there's no way. But actually. In a single point for every clue step you complete. So if you were to do easy clues. And that's the highest of efficiency. to 50 clues per hour, you'd be getting around 100, 200 points per hour. With these rates in mind, it would take you shockingly long to complete the hero pass. But thankfully... There's dailies, weeklies, weekly general, and right. special missions. You're able to gain 300... And that's how they keep you logging on every week. Because uh, the way that a lot of these games work, and this is why every single gotcha game has like a login bonus... It's because every day that a player logs in, it's like if you put a fish in a, in a lake and you're fishing, there's a higher chance for you to catch the fish in the lake that you're fishing in than if the fish is in, like, I don't know, another lake. So you want to have the fish in the lake as much as possible. Now, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to, does not guarantee that you're going to catch the fish. But if the fish is in the lake, there's a better chance you will. And every time that somebody logs into a game, that's a chance that they open up the store and they open up the pass and they spend money. How do you know the fish is in the lake? Because they have login metrics that tell you when the fish log into the lake. Fucking idiot. 75 points for dailies one, two, and three every single day. 
you're able to gain 1250 points per weekly task which also expires by the way assuming you complete this weekly task you'll have another 12 to complete throughout the three month long duration okay so that's 13 times 1250 points in total there is also weekly general missions which do not expire like and 000. give you 2000 points each so that's another 30 missions you can complete. Or sorry uh, we then have yeah, special 13, missions 000, of which there is a couple right now i'm not sure if more will be added but all of these in total will give you 20,000 Hero Pass points. This means <laughs> that by completing every single mission, you would be able to complete 40% of the entire Battle Pass, which is a significant amount. This sure. isn't including the amount that's of points you would gain by actually right. completing them. But that's like also logging in every single day to do like the dailies, the weeklies, and the special events. Like that's a lot of time and work, man. That is, that's a lot those tasks for which you would also gain points of course now if you watched my previous video on the announcement of mm -hmm. hero pass you know that the goal of hero pass was to improve daily scape by extending how long dailies take because they now definitely take longer reducing the amount of xp they give reducing or removing the daily keys you get from them and now daily missions that expire mind you account for 21 percent of the total points you need to complete the hero pass these daily missions expire every single day meaning that if you do not log on every single day to complete these missions you are completing this pass 20 percent slower than everybody else not to mention you're missing out on your treasure hunter keys which you would be getting from your daily challenges so not only did your daily challenges get nerfed you are now being misled into thinking that daily scape is less important while in fact if you want these cool cosmetics, conjure overrides, and the gameplay buffs, which we're going to get to in just a second. I mean, I think it's just too much time. Like, if it took 40 hours to unlock this, I don't think people would really complain. I feel like the reason why people are so negative about this, it seems, is because it takes so long. Like, holy fuck, man. I love battle passes. Yeah, I mean, it's nuts. People, devs need to stop pretending like their game is important enough for people to log in every single day for weeks on end. I mean, you say that, but there's a reason why all of these games have battle passes. Like, what are we talking about? Like, they, they wouldn't keep making battle passes if they didn't make money. This is obviously effective. It obviously works. You might say it doesn't work for me. Oh, I forgot you're the only person. Thank God. Well, I guess we'll just have to make... Let's just have all the companies send you an email and make sure that they confirm whether you're going to like a game or not before they release it. Like, there are a lot of people out there that this works on. That's it. Tiny Violin, thank you for the raid. You're back. Welcome back. Just in time. And, well, you're going to have to play daily to get there quickly or play far more to catch up. Or you could just spend money to buy skips, which is something we're going yeah. to get to. But for now, how let's much? focus on how long this hero pass takes to complete. Okay. okay, so we know how many points we gain from completing these missions. You would need to spend an average of 195 to 357 hours to complete the entire hero pass, assuming you complete every single daily and the weekly plus weekly general missions or jesus christ and so and and also like i i have to say again that this is at i would say usually the way that w one of the mistakes that people make and i don't know this guy so i'm not sure if he's doing this or not but is he are these numbers based off of 100 percent uptime like 100 percent efficiency and uptime yeah so like it's really not going to be that so, like, it's going to be, like, somewhere between, I'd say, like, 40 and 80% of this. So, it's way less. 2.2 to like 4 realistic hours time. per day, which I think is a lot to ask from players if you consider that they also need to complete these missions, okay? that's Somebody in chat said something pretty funny. It's not pay to win, it's pay to work. A lot of time every single day. Do keep in mind that these hours do not take into account points gained while completing tasks. It yeah. only takes into account the end reward you gain from those missions and takes that off the total 160,750 points. Right. You need. But in reality, it's not going to be that far off. Right. Now, let's say you complete every single mission, every daily, weekly, and all the special missions. How much time would you need to play every single mm -hmm. day? Well, about 1.7 to 3 hours per day, which... That's a lot, man. Like, what the fuck? That's insane. 3 hours a day, 3 times 7, that's 21. That's a part-time motherfucking job. 
is almost reasonable. But I would still say that's, that's not too reasonable long. at all. Like any time that you tell somebody they have to play a video game every single day for a ninety day time period, that's not reasonable categorically. It's like that, that, that that's just a non starter. It's not reasonable. It's fucking insane. But like nobody has that time. And the people that do, like uh, they're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Especially if you're completing all those missions, which forces a certain type of gameplay. Right, of course. I think a battle pass should take no longer than two hours per day or less if you're completing missions. Any game it should that should take more than 20 minutes. That requires you to play more than two hours per day, forcing you to do a certain playstyle by completing these missions, by the way, because that's forcing a playstyle. If you uh -huh. have to do Raptor Slayer tasks, you have to do, I don't know, two D &D hours a day. Or you've I don't know, you've maxed out Dude, your that's speed. insane. It's not good. Even if the game is as AFK available. Imagine if you learned a skill for two hours a day for 90 days. You'd probably be able to get a job and then use the money you got from the job to buy the skip in the battle pass and you'd make more money and come out ahead. RuneScape and the average player probably has a longer play session than a player playing, I don't know, Far Cry or something. Mm -hmm. That isn't an excuse. And the reason that isn't an excuse is because not everyone has the ability to AFK RuneScape at their job. Not everyone yeah. can commit even AFK hours to a game like this every single day. For every daily you miss, you're going to need to spend around 93 minutes to catch up doing normal skilling or combat AFK gameplay. So right. while the battle pass doesn't take incredibly long to complete, it does if you start missing out on missions. Nah, this shit's ridiculous. Like, if you compare it to, like, the uh, Nameless Glory and Honkai Star Rail, if you compare it to the Lost Ark Battle Pass, if you compare it to the Fortnite Battle Pass, if you compare it to the World of Warcraft uh, Trading Post, if you compare it to the New World Battle Pass... Like, the other ones might be, like, getting fucked in the ass, but this one's, like, getting fucked in the ass with a wheelbarrow full of dicks. To put it into perspective, it's a lot more. That's a lot of day. It is. This is no joke, man. There's a lot of fucking stuff you got to do here. So it's, wow. it's a little bit too slow for my liking. And Jangex knows this, and that's why they are selling skips yet course, again. Yeah. For bonds and also for IRA money. Oh, you so that's cool. So, like, basically they allow you to buy levels at a flat rate, so it incentivizes you once you get to level 100 to buy the last 20 levels. Is that right? Because it says you're able to buy levels and not experience numbers. Yeah? Oh, that's smart. You can complete the entire hero pass by spending just 24 bonds. 24 bonds. 20 so 24, 7 times 24. What the fuck is that? That's like uh, $141 or something like that. That's pretty good. 24 bonds. For 120 levels. Oh, euros. What's... Well, it's whatever. Worse is that these level skips become stronger as you grow up because the levels after level 99 require 3,000 points each. So a level skip then yeah. is yeah. far more exactly. valuable. Exactly. See, yeah. How much more valuable? Well, well a bond is worth 5,000 points, so about 20.8 hours of skilling gameplay if you are levels 1 to 99. And for levels 100 to 120, they're worth 15,000 points or about mm -hmm. 62 and a half hours of gameplay. Right. Jagex knows exactly what they were doing and they of were kind they enough did. to not- Of course, of, of course they did. This is, it, it, it's very, it's very well designed. And I think that they're going to make a lot of money off of this. Now, they might try to scale it back or not do it in the same way. Maybe take it down to 110 levels or something like that. But- like, yeah, this is a good idea. They should definitely, they're going to get so much money out of this, especially once people hit 100 and you have like the sunk cost that's like fucking clawing at the back of their mind. They're like, are you really not going to just buy the last 20 levels to get those last cool rewards? Like, are you really just going to let this, are you going to come, uh, did we come this far and it doesn't even matter? You know, like fucking playing Linkin Park in their mind. Yeah, of course they're going to buy it. Absolutely. Yeah. Even talk about these skips during the live stream or the initial posting of Hero Pass. Alternatively, you can also go on your mobile device, log in, and buy Hero Pass skips for money directly instead of using bonds 
And the entire hero pass would cost you one. So it's 40 levels. So you buy three of those, it's $46, $47. That's like basically in real money, since it, that's in euros, uh, dollars. I think that's like, what, 170 180 bucks, something like that? That's pretty fuck. It's 200 God damn. 141 euros if you wanted to skip the entire thing straight away. Which is just absurd. Now you might be wondering, well, you don't really need to complete Hero Pass, don't you? It's just cosmetics. And, you know, some people want them more than others. And that's true. But this Hero Pass has gameplay buffs in the form of charges. And you're of going to they, want to well, have of course the they want to. Of course they're going to give you buffs. Because the buffs make people want to play the game. Now, if you refer back to the Let's Go Whaling, uh, the, the uh, what was it called? Pa PowerPoint presentation. Uh, that was done by that guy from fucking, like, somewhere in Europe. And he said that the people that you make the most money on are the people that want efficiency and time savers. Guess what all of these things do? They're efficiency and time savers. Because you know what? The people at Jagex watched that video. ...depending on what you're doing in the game. What's really disgusting about these charges also, is that the majority of these are locked early on, that is, behind the premium reward tier. So the tier that only Premier Club members have access to for free, even though they're technically paying for mm -hmm. it by you know, paying in advance for membership and all that kind of stuff. Let's have a look at the Chaos War charges. At level 17, we get 12 of them if we have the premium pass. Right. At level 57, we get another 12 premium pass. Ah, and then finally, at level 97, Three 16, players that's without a lot. Premier Club wow, membership get wow. 16 Chaos War charges. So Premium Pass players get 150... Reduces incoming damage in the Zamorakian Undercity Elite Dungeon by 20% for a full run. And that... Wait, so that's like the last dungeon in the game? So you can like buy an ICC buff? <laughs> Oh, wow. 50% more Chaos War charges, and they get them way sooner. That's Unless, cute. of course, you buy the Premier Pass, which you can only get by being a Premier Club member, so buying yearly membership, or spending three bonds, or buying it directly on mobile for 18 euros. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget that some of these buffs are incredibly strong. The Chaos Ward one allows you to reduce damage at one of the hardest bosses in RuneScape by yeah. 20%. That's insane. So that means you 20%. have 150% more kills with 20% damage reduction just because you're a Premier Club member or you decided to buy the Premier Pass. This shouldn't be the case. Special cosmetics should be locked behind a paywall. Gameplay changing buffs should not be something a player is locked out of just because they don't have Premier Club membership or they didn't spend three bonds. That would have been true 10 years ago, but that was 10 years ago and this is now. The truth is, games now are uh, very highly monetized, and while there will be games like Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate, Blasphemous, Hollow Knight, and I can go on and on, Vampire Survivors, there will also be games like this, because these games make a lot of money. They make a tremendous amount of money. That's why people keep doing it. To get the premier pass there are so many things wrong with hero pass and the intended reasons to replace yak track with this system that i challenge jagex to make it right remove hero pass take a step back and actually listen to the community that is clearly upset Start i'm by sure that's gonna happen rebalancing how these gameplay buff rewards are given out give players back their daily keys for daily missions and actually reduce daily fomo by removing the expiration date for daily missions so that you can complete these whenever you want and never ever call an mtx update a major update again well it is a major update to be fair i mean usually they wait for probably like i mean I mean, an update that just fucks the game over this much? This is a lot. I'd say this is a major update for sure. Now, this is kind of what I think is going to happen. I think that Jagex is kind of connected with the community, and you might actually see a amount of people. This is a good video, by the way. I'll link you guys the video. I love anytime, bro. Like, anytime I get to see one of these, I'm always happy. 
And uh, so let's go ahead. You, you know what I love to do? Ooh, I love to do this. Uh, there's the video right there. Make sure to give it a like. Give them a sub if you like the video. I thought this was really good, really well put together. Let's take a look at, uh, let's do a couple of conversion. Uh, EU to USD. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Euro, let's just do 47 to keep it simple. So $50. So $50, we're talking about really $50, $151. So you have $151, and then you have 1.6 hours. And then so you do the math on that. And uh, let's do calculator. Uh, 90 days multiplied by 1.6. And this is the most uh, conservative estimate. And then you take that, and then uh, you look at so you basically have to spend 144 hours in order to save $151. There are kids in Malaysia that will probably be making more money than you are. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oh my God. I'm from Malaysia. Well, hey, it's not you. I'm not blaming you. I don't know. Malaysia makes more than that. Well, maybe the kids don't. I don't know. You find some other other country that makes doodads for uh, the U.S. at very cheap prices. I don't know what country does it now. Taiwan, China, who fucking cares? The point's still the same. Uh, this is insane. It's obviously insane, and it's designed in a way to incentivize you to uh to give them money that's it argentina yeah whatever indonesia sure you should play runescape 3 and max out everything and buy everything and watch everyone mauled that's probably a good idea that's a great idea i just um i, I i'm not surprised about this at all i'm not and i think it's going to continue uh jagex has responded Oh, really? So Jagex has apparently responded to this. All right, here we go. Let me preface this video by saying that the feedback is not enough, but Jagex ooh, has responded ooh, to your feedback ooh. on Hero Pass, so let's talk about it. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Jagex states that they've been listening and discussing our feedback and are looking to make the system- That's not a good start. That they've been listening to our feedback? Uh-oh. System better for everyone. Now, I want you to remember the sentence, this post is for some key areas they are already investigating. Okay, this starts with daily missions. Daily missions <laughs> were balanced with the intention of moderately active players, according to Jagex, being able to complete them in 20 to 40 minutes or faster. Uh, bro, like, are you talking about, like, average, like, the daily playtime is, like, moderately engaged? Is, like, an out two hours? What do you mean? ...when doing the spotlighted task for that daily. Jagex acknowledges we like our fast dailies for a chunk of experience, a burst of experience, if you will, and is reducing the time it takes to complete dailies to around 15 minutes tops, and buffs the amount of XP you gain from dailies 1 and 2. Dailies 1 and 2 will now each provide... So a if it's a 0.25 multiplied by 2, so uh, that means that you're going to be making uh, anywhere between $2.50 to $3 in the sweatshop now. Things are improved. This is a tremendous improvement. And as I said before, um, you know, this is kind of what I would have expected large XP lamp each, which if I recall correctly means that daily missions 1 and 2 will now give the exact same XP as an extended daily without needing to extend it. Nice one Jagex. Completing the daily with a spotlighted task will still complete it twice as fast, so so far it's looking good. Now something we didn't know is that Jagex plans to or intends to add more special missions for future content releases during this battle pass mm -hmm. so that you'll be able to get more hero points from those special missions which give one two or five thousand points depending yeah on i think that makes sense right because like you know you look at it from their perspective and they want to introduce these special missions whenever they see player engagement getting lower in between the battle passes so like as soon as it hits a certain threshold they release one of them it gets people to come back to do the rest of the battle pass this is uh uh, this is probably a good idea.
mission, which is good. As for Iron Man players, they are looking into discussing mm -hmm. the topic of Iron Man players being able to claim that XP lamp from daily missions. So far in an unofficial poll in a big Iron Man Discord, it seems that the majority of Iron Man players are against this. Please keep in mind that this is an unofficial poll. I'm just sharing the news mm -hmm. here. And I'm not going to dabble too deep into Iron Man accounts because it's not my place to talk about it as I'm a Mainscape player. I did see a lot of concerns well, about- Well, Iron Man is, uh, what's this here? Basically, if you're looking to discuss Iron Man players being able to claim experience and mine, we're looking to ask the Iron Man community directly. I mean, I feel like Iron Man is clearly like a challenge. It's like a challenge thing, right? So if you're able to like, it's like playing hardcore WoW if you could buy like an experience boost or something. So I, I, I mean, I feel like anybody who's going to play a hardcore version of the game willingly isn't going to want to have like experience boosters put into the game that you can buy, right? I mean, like, what the fuck? You can't trade? Yeah, but what I'm saying is it's a hardcore version of the game. The amount of oddments Iron Man players were getting, so maybe that's something up for a change as well. Going back to daily missions, there are two big things I'm missing here. Firstly, the reintroduction of Treasure Hunter Keys as a reward from daily challenges, now called daily missions. There is not a single good reason why these need to be removed as long as people can buy Treasure Hunter Keys. Secondly, there needs to be some kind of save up and store mechanic for daily missions if Jangax's goal really is to reduce daily scape. As it stands, for every set of daily 1, 2, and 3 you miss, you will need to play an hour and a half to catch up. By introducing a save and store mechanic for let's say 7 days, you would allow players to catch up on their dailies and reduce the need to log in every day without hurting the amount of hours they play every single week or month. Of course, I'm not sure what their goal is here, but if their goal is to have people play a lot more, then would it really matter if they played 15 minutes every single day for seven days or all of that time at once on a single given day? Why it's better for people to log in every single day. Yeah, I can guarantee you it's better for them to log in every single day because there are probably... So, like, there are probably different types of advertisements that exist in terms of, like, load-in and log-in screens. So, logically, it would make sense for the company to want to see the player, want the player to see the advertisements as much as possible. So, it would be better that the player logs in frequently, but for less time versus the player logs in once for more time. Is that so important? Well, just, because the Hero like, Pass is incredibly grindy, which we're going to get to in just a second. Yeah. And these daily missions account for 21% of the total points you need to complete the entire hero pass. So even if they Great take 15 yeah. minutes, even if they take 5 minutes, which admittedly is quite short, having to log in every single day is not a nice feeling if you aren't feeling the game. If yeah. the goal is truly to improve and reduce daily escape, the solution is simple. Stop making at least a portion of the player base feel like they have to log in every single day. And the portion of the player base that feels forced are the ones that want to complete the pass, obviously. Not everyone is going to care about completing the pass. I understand that. But if we're trying to reduce daily escape here, we're going to need to allow players to save up their daily missions and complete them whenever they feel like it. Just like the general weekly missions. I mean, the mechanics are literally already in the battle pass, but it isn't applied to daily missions as they still have an expiration timer. Now, those missions are still incredibly important because Jagex is not yet adjusting progression rates even well of course not right because that that would make it the thing is if they adjust the progression rates then it lowers the value of the boosts i mean logically right of course if you're completing every single mission and perhaps a couple of additional special missions they're going to add it's still going to take you one and a half to three hours per day to complete this battle pass. In the news post, Jagex says that moderately active players could achieve mm -hmm. level 99 in the battle pass, which isn't the end, with their normal playtime. And whatever active players are, which is 30% of the player base uh -huh. according to Jagex, would be able to complete the entire battle pass with their normal average playtime. Now that's- Well, wouldn't their normal average playtime, like I, I bet a lot of people in RuneScape play it like WoW, where they're just sitting around in town fucking around, right? Like, yeah, they're not like, so whenever you say like their normal play time, what you're saying is that they have an online time of let's say a hundred hours 
but that 100 hours that they're doing isn't 100 hours really of play time that's probably like 30 hours of play time and then 70 hours of afk or bank standing or something like that apparently that's what it's called yeah so like it's just like this is a very bad this is a very bad analysis because like playing for the battle pass you have to do specific activities to play the battle pass it's not like you get the battle pass progression it's not like you get 10 points on a battle pass every five minutes you're online right so you have to be doing a specific activity in order to make the battle pass progress it's just it's surprising to me that uh that they would use such an argument most definitely based on real statistics although why would you want why would you design a system that two-thirds or 70 percent of your player base can achieve is not going to be able to complete mind you well, so they buy the pad so they buy the boost like what are we talking about obviously that's why to some of the more controversial rewards such as trailblazer charges behind the premium pass yes the premium pass are locked at level 107 surely a battle pass with an infinite task system after completing it should be balanced around the majority of your player base it's so hard to comprehend how they thought this was going to go down well i i, I really do not understand it should be like at least 40 percent faster to make up for whatever the if it's 40 percent faster it still takes forever like uh the thing is that like this kind of stuff i don't think that they expected for it to go well at all I don't think so in any way, right? Yeah, the fawn most of his argument is thinking entirely from the perspective of a player. Exactly. Like, he's looking at this from the perspective of, like, what does this provide to me? What value does this provide to me, a player? Well, this... You think they add battle passes into the game for the players? No, they add them into the game to make money. That's why every game has battle passes. That's a d d fucking duh, right? And so you have these situations where people look at the game and they say why would this possibly happen well i mean as mr crab says money 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 it causes people to spend money on the store it causes people to inter interface with the battle pass which is probably at some other point talking about other things that you can buy on the store this is just the way these games work I mean, really, uh, it's just, that's how it is. So it's, I don't think that they expected for it to go well at all. I think that they expected that the players would have pushback and they would adjust based off of how much pushback they would get. But I don't think that anybody at the company probably thinks this is a genuinely good thing for players. Like maybe they think that it could be a neutral thing for players and it could be maybe a positive thing for the developers. So it's okay for it to happen. But the truth is that, yeah, that's what I think it is. Cost of making a game has increased exponentially, but selling the game has only gone up with inflation. Costs have to be found somewhere else, and usually it's subtle. You're right. You're absolutely right. Inflation is a bitch. Money is tight. People still want free games. They don't want to pay even $70 for them. People have been paying $60 for video games 15 years. What the fuck else is the same price it was 15 years ago? Very few things. So yeah, of course they're going to try to make up money. Because this is the problem. Gamers don't want to spend a lot of money on video games. Absolutely not. Like, look at the shit that Starforge, or not Starforge, uh, Starfield uh, got with uh, Starfield. Uh, fucking Bethesda got with Starfield. Like, uh, there was a huge amount of people that were angry because the game was, uh, was a hundred dollars. It was a hundred fucking dollars. Starforge, well, no, I mean, to be fair, people were upset about the prices with Starforge at the beginning, too. We had to change those. So, actually, it's really, really not that bad of an analogy. But we're talking about games. So, the, the thing here is that whenever you look at this situation... It makes sense that they're going to want to do this. And this is why so many games are adopting these microtransactions. It's because gamers are unwilling to spend money at the rate that the cost of making video games is accelerating at. And I, I think that there is some, like, it, there's a give and take to this, right? Where, like, the developers have to understand that having famous voice actors voice act a character in a video game isn't worth the extra ten dollars it might make the video game cost it's not worth the extra ten dollars to have like mouth vocal you know like mouth capture 
whenever you're doing like uh, uh, subtitles or like, you know, closed captioning for another language in this video game. Gamers mainly care about gameplay, I would say, right? Because that's kind of in the name. So you always have these developers that have this like massive fixation on creating these things that players don't really care about, like having a UI that's designed in a certain way because that's what they learned in game school. Well, nobody gives a fuck what you learned in game school. People want to play a fucking video game. And so the developers are spending, I think, a lot of money on things that don't matter. And at the same time, I think the players are also being unreasonable. I think that you can't realistically expect the price of video games to maintain, like, RuneScape 3 is free, isn't it? Like, how the fuck do you expect them to make money? But the problem is because players are unwilling to spend money on hardly anything. Well, then guess what happens? Well, then you have these systems get put in because the, the company needs to make up the difference. So I understand, like, I understand both sides to this. And it's a big problem with gaming, and it's going to become a bigger problem over time. How is it unreasonable? The reason why it's unreasonable is because I don't think that you can expect to buy a continuously improving product in terms of like graphics, fidelity, updates, etc. Uh, with a video game nowadays, and then expect to pay the same price that you did for 15 years ago. I just think that like it's completely... It's completely ignorant of the way that money works in our society. Inflation exists. And it affects everybody. Like, it, it's, 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 this isn't an opinion. It, it's not... It's just a fact. So whenever you go and you, and you say, well, I don't want to pay any more money for a game, that's fine. You don't want to pay any more money for a game. Sure. Then they're going to have things like this. That's just what it is. I used to pay a buck for my games because my parent bought me a chip PSX or recently games used to cost 60 back then. Yeah, I think people can always get, you know, hacked stuff, etc. But the point is that the CEOs got paid less, it would be far less of an issue, bro. No, it wouldn't. No, if the CEO got paid less, like, what, what like, that's... <laughs> Look at the balance sheet for one of these companies. So, so number one, like, if you look at Bobby, right? If you look at Bobby, where is Bobby getting paid from? Where, whenever people say Bobby made $200 million, did he get paid $200 million? Did they just bring in like a, you know, they, they brought in like a fucking, uh, a few trucks full of these and then they just, you know, dumped it off at his fucking, uh, at his mansion? No. He's getting paid in stocks. It's value. It's not something that's like liquid money. I mean, guys, y'all have really got to understand this shit. So I can see where games, uh, I can see where games have this problem. Now, there are games that you can that can still succeed and i think that uh, baldur's gate 3 and elden ring are two great examples of this and i'll tell you why it's because they are a complete experience there's not a lot of new content that's being added to elden ring they added the coliseum and that was about it right and the coliseum isn't really anything new it's just a menu using already existing assets right and guess what like I think that if you expect a game to be continuously developed over time, you should expect to have to either spend money or at least other people are able to spend money to fund that development. Now, whether you agree with that or not, that's your own decision. But I do think it is unreasonable for you to expect that playing a game, buying it like one time. I think that whenever you buy a game, this is my philosophy on this. Whenever you buy a game, you pay for everything in that box at that time. Anything new, any future updates, you're not paying for that. You're paying for what existed whenever you buy that box. Whether this is uh, Elden Ring, a World of Warcraft expansion, or anything else. So this is the problem that gaming has now. It's that 
developers and development studios are wasting money focusing on things that gamers don't care about and gamers simultaneously are unwilling to spend more money for video games so what the development studios do is that they just keep spending more money on the game and then they just add in microtransactions to make up the difference for what's going to happen for the fact that people aren't spending uh spending money spending more money that, that accounts for inflation so that's what it is i'd say it's more unable than unwilling i'd say it doesn't matter they're not getting the money at the end of the day they're not getting the money stop making live service games well, people like playing live service games. They, the reason why they make live service games is because people play them. But are gamers really, though? Gamers say they won't pay, but I think they do anyways. You're right. Everybody says, oh, I'm not going to play. Give me a second. Oh, I'm not going to play Starfield on the first day. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I would never do that. So, uh, does it show, like, how many players it had the first day? I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to find it. How many people did it have the first day? Yeah, you can zoom out. Oh, can I? Oh, thanks. I didn't know that. Okay, so it had 234. So, let's do a calculation. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, times 100... 23 million dollars that's a lot of money so everybody says they're not going to do it but if you look at what the numbers are there's a lot of people that did it and that's the problem it's that people say they're not going to do something and then they do it because every like video gamers are yeah i keep game pass money you're right about that but look at hogwarts legacy it was the same situation um and it was the same early access everything was pretty much the same as this and Lost Ark too, by the way. And uh, the, the thing is, like, gamers, I think, have some of the least self-control in any group of people that I've ever experienced. Gamers have no self-control. They will eat shit, and they will beg for you to tell them it's chocolate. They will t write uh, fucking essays about why it's chocolate. They will make video essays about why it's actually chocolate. They're going to be like, I don't mind eating shit. It tastes fine to me. I don't care about the taste. <laughs> I actually, at first I didn't like eating shit, but after eating it for 10,000 hours, I've actually grown to test them to the taste. You should try it yourself. <laughs> this is what gamers do. So I think that gaming right now is just in such a stupid position. It's in such a stupid spot because like, you have these things that are like, like, this is just so stupid. Like, this battle pass is so fucking dumb. I'm sorry I'm, like, going off on a massive tangent about this. But, like, this battle pass is obviously really fucking stupid. It's obviously designed in a way to make people want to spend money. It's not player-friendly at all. It's just made to make money. And I think that most battle passes are like that. Is there a spectrum of battle passes? Absolutely. And I do think this battle pass is on the side of the spectrum that is much more negative. But overall, um... I think we can expect to see more of this. I've eaten shit for 15 years. Why would I eat anything else? This works just fine. Yeah. What do you mean I should stop eating shit after 15 years? I've been eating it for 15 years. Why would I stop eating shit? That's part of what the game is. The game is about eating shit. How could so you want to change the fundamental nature of the game? I mean, it tastes fine the best part of the game what are the active players are missing opposed to the active players in terms of playtime i would hope that a battle pass with an infinite system after finishing it would be balanced around like 80 percent of the player base at least the majority of players need to be able to complete the battle pass not the it is balanced around 80 percent of the player base at least again it's balanced around them not being able to complete it and then being incentivized through the sunk cost fallacy to spend money to make up the difference. It is designed to be completed, but not with time. Minority. Not Players only should not with be time. Spending 
1.5 to 3 hours per day completing this battle pass after completing every single mission. And even though this is the supposed first feedback post, Jagex not addressing one of the mm -hmm. biggest issues with this battle pass with their first bit of feedback feels like a slap in the face. It's like your entire car breaking down after an accident, the local shop calling you and saying, hey, out. we fixed Head our cracked window, yeah. but the car still won't start. The other big issue are those content buffs that are distributed quite unfairly towards free members mm -hmm. and premier players. The content buffs of which the Chaos Ward and Trailblazer ones were the controversial ones, according to Jagex, were a reason to incentivize players to check out certain content. Why not just make it a special weekly event? Why does it have to be in an MTX system? Well, it's because it's not true. They're incentivizing people to check out the content. No, they're incentivizing people who are checking out the content to check out the battle pass. Like, it, it, it's like, you know, you're putting the cart before the horse. Why do premium players get more of these buffs than regular paying members that are already paying for their game? It's not a fair way of distributing game-changing buffs which could get more powerful as we go, which is the worrying part about these kind of buffs of being split between premier and regular members yes. and being part of a battle pass. Yes. The very least they're doing is they're going to have a look at where these buffs are placed in the hero pass to maybe place them a little bit more forward, at least that's what I assume, mm -hmm. to reduce the amount of, hey, you need to do this to get these buffs, otherwise you're missing out, FOMO feeling. It's also worth noting that Jagex apologized for presenting the Hero Pass as a major update, which is good to see. In conclusion, Jagex is awake and listening, and it's good to see them at least adjusting things, although I really hope that this isn't the last we'll hear from it. There's still improvements to be made, specifically on balancing those content buffs, the speed at which you progress for playing your way, i.e. not completing missions the entire time, and the reduction of daily scape. It's worth noting that I may not make another dedicated video on this topic and instead add it into the usual weekly news unless Jagex does something out of the ordinary. Oh, yeah. if you don't feel satisfied by these changes just yet, don't act that way and let your voice be heard. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Just so you guys know, getting mad about it on Twitter isn't going to do anything. Blizzard only started changing Shadowlands when people quit the game. So if you're not happy with how the game is, quit. Unsubscribe, stop spending money, stop playing it, don't play for free. They're still making money off of you because you're part of the ecosystem, even if you're just a blade of grass. Stop playing the fucking game. Stop playing games that you fucking hate. Stop spending your life getting mad about things that you're spending your time doing on purpose. Stop going out of your way to walk down the sidewalk. You see a piece of dog shit on the grass. You get on all fours. You're rolling around and you're like, ah, this is awful. Who put this here? Get off the fucking grass. Yes! Walk down the sidewalk and walk away. Stop spending your life getting mad about something that you devote hours every day to. You spend time driving to work. I bet that makes you mad. You spend times at work. I bet that makes a lot of you mad. You've got to drive home. Guess what? You're still mad. And you go home. You have a limited period of time. And you are devoting it to something that also makes you mad. Why are you alive what are you doing where is the upside where is the light at the end of the tunnel where is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow what is the point of your existence what the fuck is wrong with you stop doing it today right now if you don't like this stop playing the game this, the Hero Pass is a battle pass that offers a variety of rewards, such as experience boosts, cosmetics, pay-to-win aspects, such as 20% reduced damage in the hardest dungeon, up to date, among other things. We are calling on you to raise awareness to this issue by looking into it on stream and help us take a stand to pressure Jagex. I also encourage you to check out the RuneScape 3 subreddit and to truly see how bad it is. Check out Protox's video, Jagex is lying to you. Okay, uh, sure. Why don't we do this? Uh, this is a nine minute video. I'll watch a nine minute video. Sure, I can handle that. And this is the last paragraph.
Um, we have turned a blind eye to every monetization scheme up until this. Everything from monthly subscription to pay to win spins that reward gold points, cosmetics and experience, bonds, a cosmetic store and legendary pets that you can purchase that aid you in picking up the loot and whatnot, selling bank space and releasing a microtransaction update followed with, by a mental health awareness update. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you the problem that you're gonna be running into, okay? I, I apologize that this is taking a bit longer than usual. Um, so these are RuneScape 3 players, and I want to explain to you what the problem is. That is the problem. And if you look closely, you will see that the frog that has been boiling for years is dead. And then, of course, you have over here, I'd like to draw your attention uh, to this area over here. And these two people are JAGX employees. Uh, this person says, what's for dinner? And then this guy says, RS3 players. So, what does this picture signify? What are we doing? Well, let's talk about it. This picture right here shows that you have been boiling for years. You've been boiling so long, you didn't even realize it was hot. And then finally, at 95% temperature, you're almost cooked. You're trying to get out of the pot? Bro, you think you're going to get over to here with like, uh, you know, Baldur's Gate and Elden Ring 3? Uh-uh, buddy, you're in the pot with Honkai Star Rail. You're in the pot with, uh, New World, World of Warcraft, Fate Grand Order, Genshin Impact. That's right. And you're not getting out of this motherfucking pot. I hope you like Lost Ark because you're about to be playing it soon. So, you're gonna sit around and you're gonna cry about this fucking bullshit whenever you made excuses for why it was okay in the past. Uh-uh. Nope. You sealed your fate whenever you said that it was okay for them to sell gold. You sealed your fate whenever you said that it was okay for them to sell cosmetics and to sell boosts. And now, you say you want to get out of the pot. But the Jagex employees, you know what they said? They said dinner's almost ready. And I'm sorry to say, but they're going to be eating good tonight. So we'll go ahead and we'll watch this video. Of course we'll watch the video. But I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, I sympathize with you. And I also want you to know that nothing will probably change. And to the extent that it does, you can count the days until it is done again and it will continue to happen until the community gives in somebody in chat had a good point it will change you're right it will change it'll get worse you better be fucking happy you little bitch i talked about this for an hour